Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to do a cutout using Canva. It is super, super fast, super easy, and um, something that I really highly recommend for people that want to do cutouts in their yearbook but maybe don't know Photoshop or don't have Photoshop. Um, and honestly, even if you do have Photoshop, I use Canva all the time every day to do cutouts because it's just so fast. Um, Photoshop's come a long way with their cutout software and so it is easier now than it's ever been. Um, but I used to be a really big hater of Canva. Canva because I thought that uh, people just use the templates and then they post on social media and they didn't actually do any work and it kind of in my mind devalued uh, good graphic design because everyone just used these templates and they were not paying you know designers for their talents and stuff like that um, and then also I was like I know Photoshop I don't need Canva like it's it's for like non-designers to make it really easy um, and I was like a Photoshop purist I guess you could say um, but it actually is really, really good, um, especially for graphic design for social media when you're resizing stuff really quickly for like all the different platforms. Um, the templates are also really good, if, especially if you use them as a starting point and then you customize them with your own branding. Um, I'm not a big fan of just like using the template and like hitting export and then that's it. Like I think that you still need to be creative and brand things in your own colors and fonts and stuff like that. But, um, you know, there are a lot of really good things about Canva and cutouts is one of them. And so a couple of things you need to know is you do need a pro account. It's not on the Canva free account. They do have a free version if you want to try it out and use some of their templates and see how Canva works. But uh, this particular feature, you do need a pro account. Um, it is, I think, like $10 a month um, if you're just a regular person like me. If you are a teacher, though, or a student, you actually get a free pro account, which is really, really awesome. It's great that they um, really support education. And so um, if you are a teacher, you go to canva.com slash education. I'll just go there right now and show you. Education. Um, there I go. There we are. Okay, I'm gonna move myself down here. Um, and so here you can see that you can under uh, teacher go and say get verified. And what it's gonna do is you're gonna be able to put your email address in. Um, I already have an account and I don't have a school email address. So it's gonna just take you here. Um, you're gonna say get started, put your email address in and it'll verify you. If your district has already been verified, it's super fast. If not, it takes a couple of days to get approved. But once you do, it's um, a totally a full pro account for free as an educator and then you can add your students as part of your team and then they also get those pro features for free and you can share things like branding and so you can actually upload like your program logo or your colors or your fonts um, even like fonts you download you can upload into canva and use them and so you're all using the same suite of colors you don't have to put them in every time it's so, so good. So um, make sure that the teacher goes and signs up for their free Canva Pro account first, and then they can upload their students um, under their team afterwards. And so I'm gonna go ahead and hit, hit, hit skip for right now. Um, but if you're if you're already approved to be a, an educator in the Canva platform, you're gonna go over to your team on the left side. It'll say um, like your name and then your classroom, I think, or your class. Um, and then under here, there's a bunch of uh, options and you're gonna go to people. And then here's where you can add people. So I obviously don't have an educator account, so it might look a little bit different, but that's where you're gonna add people to your team. And then um, they're gonna have all the exact same uh, features and branding stuff that you put in there. And so that's where you go and add your students. Um, but like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a cutout. And so there's lots of things I can show you in Canva. So if you have questions, please let me know. I'm happy to make more videos and show you. Um, but the, my favorite feature is the cutouts. And so we're going to go up at the top where it says create a design. Then we're going to go, I'm just going to pick a random one. Um, for right now, I'm just going to pick Instagram, um, post, which is just a square. But what I usually recommend, actually I'll do, I'll do what I recommend. I usually recommend that students when they're doing a cutout, they use a letter size document. The reason is um, when you're putting something in print, it has to be high enough resolution. And so we don't want to use a web format like an Instagram post, because if you put that post on your yearbook, it's going to be super, super tiny. And so right now what we're determining is like our canvas size. And typically you're not going to have a, a yearbook cutout that's like bigger than a letter size piece of paper. So I like to just use the letter size piece of paper, drop your photo onto it, do the cutout and then save it. And then you know that it's big enough for your actual um, book to be printed. Um, so I, I recommend using a letter size piece of paper and then it'll open up in this new tab. 
um, and it'll give you this canvas. There's a couple of things that you can do to help this um, kind of look like a graphic design software. Um, by default, some of these things are turned off. And so if yours doesn't look quite like this, go up to file and you can do things like show rulers and guides. And so right now that's how it usually looks by default. There's no rulers, but sometimes those rulers can be really helpful for aligning things um, if you're using it for more than just cutouts. You can also show margins, and so you can actually set these margins of how wide or thin they should be to match your page. And then you can also show the print bleed. And so this is really helpful if you do have something that you're designing in uh, Canva and then you're exporting it to make sure that you have enough bleed allowance in there. And then you can also set all these settings um, however you want to, like but the, the defaults when they come up. Um, and then also from the ruler, you can drag like guides and use those as well. And those don't print or save. Those are just in the Canva document itself. So for our purposes, I'm going to go ahead and turn all of those off because I don't really need them in the way. And I just want to show you again, cutouts. So um, you were going to go over here on the left side, you have your navigation. You're going to go to uploads and you're going to pick a photo uh, or you're going to upload a photo that you have taken. So I'm just going to pick a random one that I have in here. Uh, we'll do this Elsa cake. This is from my theme presentation. If you've seen it, um, this is from the internet. So it's not the highest quality photo. If you have a photo from your camera or your, um, even your phone, it's going to be higher quality than from the internet. So like we say, always like never, ever, ever use a photo from the internet. If you just like right click and hit save, it's going to be too low resolution to put in your yearbook. So, um, don't do what I'm doing right here. This is just an example. So you uh, upload your photo and then you drop it in and you can resize it. So notice these little purple lines that come up around it. This is the actual photo itself. Um, and so you can resize it however you want. I usually just make it as big as I can um, because you can always resize it within your design software once you get the cutout made. Um, and so then you're gonna click on the image and then when you do, you'll notice at the top, this menu comes up. When I'm not clicked on anything, it just says animate. You can also do animation in Canva, it's pretty cool, but that's not what we're here for. Um, so you're going to click on the image and then you're going to hit edit image uh, when that menu comes up and then you're going to hit BG remover. It's this big beach ball um, and that stands for background remover. So hit that and depending on how fast your internet is and how many people you have on it at the moment, this takes anywhere from like five to 10 seconds. So as you can see, um, that was pretty fast and it did a pretty good job. I would say like 90% of the time, it does a really, really good job with cutouts. There's obviously going to be some times where a photo is a little bit blurry or the background doesn't have enough contrast from the foreground. And so it can't really tell where those edges should be. Um, or there's something in the photo that it can't tell if it should be there or not. So like this was a little like card that said who made this cake. And so we obviously don't want that in the photo. And there's also some little things within this crown that we don't want. Um, and so it gives you the option to erase and restore to be able to really customize this cutout. So I'm going to go ahead and hit erase and then you can edit the brush size to be bigger or smaller. I'm going to start with pretty big because I just want to knock this, this section out. So we're going to do that. If you can't get, if that's not close enough for you down here, you can zoom in like crazy. I like to zoom in really, really far because remember if it's going in print, it's got to be good. Um, and so I'm going to make my brush a little smaller. And I'm going to get really close up into here and get rid of all of that content that we don't want in the cutout. Um, I usually make my brush like really small and like go crazy with it like this. There we go. And then sometimes I'll go in here and clean these up a little bit, even though that's not the end of the world if they're in there like little shadows. Um, but sometimes if you're just, if you're in the mood and you want it to be really, really good, then you can do that. Then you can also go in here and you can clear out like the other parts that were not supposed to be in there. Um, this can take some time and you know, it would take some time in Photoshop too. Um, but like I said, like 90% of the photos that you do, you're not going to have to clean up very much. Um, so let's say that we're going to be like it how it is. You're going to hit done and then let's zoom back out. And then you have your cutout here. And just to show you what it looks like, um, I'm gonna go ahead and make the background a color, just a random color, just to show you how clean of a cutout it really is. And so that's that's perfect, that's what we want. So I'm gonna delete that background color. The next part is super important when you are saving your photo. So because this is gonna be a transparent background and we want it to go, and it might layer on something else, we don't want it to have a white background. We want it to be actually transparent in the file. And so when you go up at the top to hit share and you go to download, 
you're going to make sure that one, it's a PNG, that's a transparent file. None of the other ones are transparent files. So you wanna make sure it's a PNG. If you have a cutout in it and it doesn't have a background color, it's going to suggest PNG for you. So you should be good to go, but just double check that. The next one, this is the most important. Make sure you check transparent background. If you don't, the background is gonna stay white or whatever color you have back here, you have to make sure you hit transparent background. Then you hit download and it's gonna save Oh, where'd it go? It already did it. It's going to save that PNG to your computer, um, wherever you have it saved. Uh, typically it's the downloads folder. And so then if I go to my downloads folder, uh, oh, I don't think that's on camera. Mm. Okay. Well go check your downloads folder and it should be transparent. Um, when you download that or open that file, then you can drop that into your design software and put it wherever you want, layer stuff on top of it, behind it, whatever, um, you need to do and you have your cutout and it's good to go. It's took five seconds. Um, just for fun, I'm gonna show you another one. I like to show an example with curly hair because that is traditionally really hard to um, cut out. Oh, let me not go to elements, let me go to photos. Um, so we want to show an example of what it, how it does with curly hair, but I wanna show one that has not just a plain background, also someone that has a shirt on, let's see. Let's do this one. So this picture, if you were to take this into Photoshop, um, like I said, Photoshop's come a long way, so it, it does a better job now than it did before. But um, if you were going to go and cut this out, you would need to cut in between all these little individual curls, right? Well, that's going to take five ever. So let's go see how Canva does. Sometimes when I do this as an example, it doesn't do a great job, which I think is hilarious, but um, we'll see. takes a little bit longer because it has a little bit harder time. There is not very much contrast here between the shirt and the ground, so it might not do a great job there. But again, like I said, we will see. Pretty good. Just to show you, let's make that background a color. Perfect. Looks so good. Took two seconds. You could even go in and clean up these little like flyaways here if you wanted to, but honestly, that looks so, so good and it did. It took no time at all. So again, just to review, when you go export, you're gonna hit share, move myself out of the way. You're gonna hit share, download, PNG, and then hit transparent background and you are good to go. So let me know if you have any questions or if you want anything else, um, any tutorials about Canva. It is a great program if you um, are a designer or not. It makes it super easy to be able to create content. Um, they're also adding features like crazy so you can create videos and animations and so many cool things in Canva. I really, really like it even though I hated on it for a long time. So if you have any questions, reach out. All right, talk to you soon. Bye.